This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And today, because you guys undeniably wanted to see more of it, he's going to be breaking down even more of the guns in Escape from Tarkov. It's safe to say that he remains impressed by the game. Maybe a bold statement, but it's got to be the best gun game that I've ever seen, and I haven't even played it. If there are any other games, guns, or mechanics that you guys want to see Jonathan break down, let us know in the comments section below. Make sure to subscribe for more videos exactly like this, and if you want to help out the Royal Armouries Museum and continue to support Jonathan's work, check out the links in the description of this video. Right, over to Jonathan. Okay, pausing there. I think I think someone's messing with me. My first thought when I saw the the AK with no top cover, no rear sight, no butt stop was what's happened to that poor thing. Seeing the inventory screen, clearly those parts have been taken off to demonstrate what happens if you do that. I mean, without having hands on, can't be I can't be sure, but it looked a little bit too easy to be able to squeeze off at vaguely accurate shots with no rear sight and no butt stop. And with, with practice, I'm sure you could pull that off, but um, I'd expect to be a bit more all over the place with that but there was a clear improvement when the site went on when the when the butt stop went back on of course in real life you'd have to get a screwdriver out and then screw the butt stock on because we're not talking about a, a later more modular weapon where parts just come off without tools i love the fact that the gun the guns are modeled in the virtual world essentially as they are in the real world and that's what enables you to break them down in that way and have them configured in different ways maybe a bold statement but it's got to be the best gun game that i've ever seen at this point and i haven't even played it <laughs> Okay, um, I gather people have been keen for me to see the, the gunsmith section of, of Tarkov, and I can see why. That's really, really impressive. But the sheer variety that we see in here, cosmetic as well as what looks like some pretty practical changes that you can make, um, I think I'd probably spend my most of my time in that section of the game and not actually shooting anybody because <laughs> the ability to sort of virtually customize guns like that is just, that's practically a game in itself. That's really good. I really like that. I'm going to have to uh, get a second mortgage and get a gaming PC. The Mosin rifle, 1891 is when this thing was first introduced so it's uh, seriously long in the tooth now but so many were made and it had such a long service and manufacturing life and history that there are an awful lot of them around any bolt action rifle is, is going to put you at a disadvantage unless you're at some distance away so i'd imagine most players are using this as a sniper rifle uh, with the scope otherwise people with assault rifles that have optics will be counter sniping you left, right and center. But it has certainly has the power. When the Mosin first appears in the clip there, uh, it threw me off because the, the player character is aiming it like there's nothing wrong. But if you look really closely, the front sight's actually missing. So I'm used to seeing the ability to take parts off modern modular weapons. And uh, obviously in this game, you can go mad and take all sorts of parts away and swap them with, with others. This vintage bolt action rifle with no front sight, head scratcher at first, but then you realize the depth of the game and that's what you're dealing with. So you just got to find yourself a new front sight. If you find a good one, it's going to be an accurate rifle, get the right scope on it, and it would still hold its own as, a, as an accurate rifle today. Without without slighting the Mosin, it's not the fastest bolt to operate in the world. The bolt is always going to slow you down, uh, and you can see that in the way it's animated. But again, if you're in cover, far enough away, that 7.62 round is going to do some serious damage and allow you to do that from a feral distance as well. Wow. Um, well, I'm glad I don't own that firing range. That's um, oh, that's a pretty cool gun. Named um, Mjolnir for obvious reasons, I think. It is pretty Thor's hammer in its uh, impact sound, and uh, it captures that beautifully. There. I mean, I've not I've not fired or seen that rifle fired in real life, but um, I fired 338 uh, Lapua Magnum. Sounds uh, pretty uh, pretty spot on. It's a, a very powerful cartridge. It's the very sort of top end of a, of a anti personnel rifle cartridge. We, we're familiar with 50 BMG 
things like the Barrett. They can be used successfully as long range sniper rifles because of the sheer power of the cartridge, but they're not ideal for it. What's ideal for it is 338 Lapua Magnum. So the one on the bottom is 7.62 NATO and a 338 Magnum round. So you can see that's the propellant capacity is greater. The bullet is longer, thicker, heavier. It's going to do more damage. So yeah, an interesting choice for the game um, means you've got a real spread of everything from pre-World War II military surplus to the very latest precision rifles from, from the West. Are you going to pause there? I think this is the DS Arms version of the FN FAL, or the FAL as people tend to call it. It's a little bit old fashioned these days. The tilting bolt is does not lend itself to, to great accuracy. The top cover isn't great for mounting optics, but it's good. To, I think it's good to have some more legacy weapons in a, in a game like this for variety. As in all other aspects, they've really nailed the FAL here. You have those slightly awkward, old-fashioned iron sights that don't give you the best sight picture, so that's that's realistic. You've got uh, the way the way the the sights are moving between shots because of the recoil, the simulated recoil is excellent. Depending on how it's held and the, the angle, and how how frequently the trigger is being pressed, the sight picture is changing. Which, which again, sort of reflects real use of, of a real weapon. Then when we go automatic, which most FAL variants um, do permit. The more you hold down the trigger, the more movement there is. And it looks, it, it's a sort of realistic impression that's given. So uh, yeah, really good. Okay, pausing there. There we have a Chris Vector submachine gun being used surprisingly effectively as a um, sort of pocket sniper rifle. Obviously it's not designed for that role, it's meant to be a, um, a close range weapon, a submachine gun. Very interesting design that emerged not that many years ago. It's rare that something uh, genuinely new comes along in the firearms world. It's new, sufficiently new that we don't have one. It's uh, an attempt to, and I think we, we see this um, represented pretty faithfully in the, in the way that the, game, the um, gun is modeled and uh, depicted, is to try to redirect the recoil impulse downwards but yeah, it's, it's uh, good to see it in the game for some, some visual and mechanical variety, really. Again, it's come a little bit late in the story of the submachine gun to get any real widespread adoption in the real world. I'm just gonna pause there. We've got the, the Saiger 12 shotgun here, which comes in various shapes, sizes, configurations. With the first thing we see in that in the clip is that the the shotgun's jumping around all over the place, which, although this is a semi-automatic shotgun, if you um, if you spam that trigger, whether it's the real thing or in the game, you're gonna need some serious skill to keep the muzzle on target because the, the cumulative recoil of a 12 ball, 12 gauge cartridge, five shots in a row is significant. It, it does, it, it fits the, the CQB uh, requirement in the game quite nicely. Now we've got a similar example here from the collection. This is a, a Kalashnikov derived design scaled up for whacking great 12 gauge cartridges because it's a box magazine um, and the cartridges are so huge single stack so if you want more capacity you've got to get an ever bigger longer magazine at the bottom or you do see drum magazines as well drums induce their own potential for stoppages though so um, in this fictional setup probably box magazines make sense Pausing there. Shotguns are extremely versatile weapons. The interesting thing, of course, is the change of ammunition. So we see a switch to slugs. You can pretty much, you can custom load ammunition to do whatever it is you want to do. Buckshot is, is a good sort of all purpose load because it gives you that increased chance of hitting and definitely increased chance of stopping somebody in their tracks. Not quite as we see in a lot of unre more unrealistic games where the spread is just insane. You know, there's a trade-off made for gameplay purposes, so you can't shoot anyone beyond five meters or something like that. That's not what we see in Tarkov. We see buckshot being probably about as effective as it would be 
and then switching to solid slug, so the modern day musket ball, and that will carry effectively and relatively accurately for more than 100 meters, potentially. The, the flexibility with ammunition is in all the weapons in Tarkov is really cool. Shotgun is perhaps the oldest flexible weapon that exists now, if we think of a shotgun in terms of flintlocks percussion, all the way to the present day. The, the Dragunov SVD, this being the SVD-S, shorter barrel and uh, folding stock. The original SVD is an 800 meter rifle in the sense that you can hit a person at 800 meters, not perhaps as precise as some other designs in that you can't necessarily put a group of shots in close proximity at 800 meters. What I'm really taken with here is the depiction of the scope. When you see the PSO uh, scope get uh, clamped onto the rifle, the way the, the reticle is copied from the, from the real thing, illuminated, switch that on and off, which is amazing. I don't know without experience of the game what the sort of bullet drop is like. Uh, typically, sniper rifles in games go for a mega bullet drop for gameplay reasons, uh, especially if their draw distance isn't that far. Um, so the battlefield has hugely exaggerated drop of bullets. This this seems to be a lot more realistic on that score. The way the, um, what's called the eye box is simulated, so that the black around the edges until your eye is in the right place. If you had this in VR and that worked in that way, that would be extra immersive. So yeah, really good. Uh, the UMP is an odd one. The way it's depicted in the game is it's almost getting boring saying this, but really good. <laughs> the It's quite a short weapon and a short barrel weapon. And in 45, there's still a fair bit of punch from that uh, cartridge. And it's not a locked or delayed breach. So that sort of rocking effect that we see in the clip is pretty much how it's going to how it's going to look when you shoot it. Uh, it will tend to rock back and forth in, in your shoulder very much as we see there. Okay, pausing there. Six Hour um, has seen quite a lot of success in, in real life with the MCX series of rifles. And in common with many modern firearms, it's actually marked SIG MCX multi-caliber. This one has a 5.56 barrel on it and the magazine is marked 5.56. Typically caliber, uh, caliber conversion requires changing the bolt, possibly other aspects as well with this it's just the barrel because 300 blackout is a larger bullet than 5.56 well in theory you don't even need to change the magazine um but it's a good idea to have separate magazines for 300 and 5.56 because you can blow your gun up and i'd be very interested to know if you can blow your mcx up if you can change calibers so uh answers answers in the comments perhaps so yeah a good, a good depiction there i like the, the the very the meaty sound effects of those big relatively big, chunky uh, 300 blackout cases, bouncing off the inside of that shipping container. Some really good sound design in this game. Thanks everyone. Um, those were some more guns from Escape from Tarkov, which I'm increasingly interested in. It's a, a real step forward in the depiction of firearms in video games. If uh, you feel that you'd like to, we do have a donation uh, facility on the website it's linked in the description above and uh, you might even want to look at our membership program uh, but no pressure thanks very much guys